And then zero to three was third with 14% of the vote. Probably an optimistic vote by some people, Mike. Um, but you're right. This is this is the make or break stat. This is what sort of defines um, maybe our season, right? Because we had so many uh, so many games where we had a lot of penalties. And listen, the penalties that are happen in the sort of the heat of battle, right? Some of the some of the holdings and you know illegal hands to the face on on the line, things like that. Like okay, it is what it is. That's that's why you play. But it was the dead ball. It was the personal foul. Uh, it was you know getting way too handsy on pass interference sometimes. Um, it was those ones that that just killed us. And, and those are the ones you want to see cleaned up, right? The discipline, quote unquote, discipline type penalties versus the in the in the heat of combat type penalties. There's a big difference there. And if we can clean up the discipline ones, I think we have a shot at getting that that four to seven average. But if, if we have, you know, late hits and we have uh, personal foul, foul dead ball plays and 12 men on the field, just mental errors. I think that's the part that uh, that'll make that number higher. Right, and those are the sloppy penalties we can't have. So, I mean, we get that cleaned up, we're going to win a lot of ball games. Well, we had a lot of penalties last year, Mike, because um, our freshman um, kickoff specialist Daniel Obarski kicked a bunch of balls out of bounds. We had good fun with him uh, throughout the season. Uh, it sounds like he's firmly entrenched as our place kicker this year, so we're going to need him to uh, uh, to to come through and, and have a big year. So, more of a tongue in cheek fun question is how many kicks. Would Obarski sail out of bounds this year? Your options were zero to two, three to five, or more than six. The winner with 52% of the vote, three to five, Mike. Three to five kicks are going to sail out of bounds, according to the fans, which might not be too much. I don't even really know. There's no stats on that because you and I kept looking last year uh, to figure out how many uh, you know, how many kicks out of bounds was the record. I don't know that we ever figured that out, but uh, more than half the people feel like three to five are sailing out of bounds. You know, I, I I think it's I went with zero to two, and for one big reason, well, after he kicks the second one out of bounds, I don't think he's allowed to kick off anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it was Lou Holtz who once told his quarterback, you know, I got great news for you. You're you're not going to throw more than three interceptions this year. And he's like, the quarterback said, Oh, great. Is that yeah? Because after you throw the third one, you're not you're not playing anymore. So so along the same lines, if he starts falling into this habit, he kicks one out of bounds early in the season, and give him another shot. He kicks another one out of bounds. Uh, I don't think he's going to have a chance to kick the third one because I've seen enough at that point. Nineteen uh, percent of the people said six or more. <laughs> so whether that was just uh, <laughs> having a little fun with it there or very really having a lack of confidence. Uh, I mean, we have Riley Stevens, Mike, uh, a freshman uh, walk-on, I believe. Uh, allegedly has a pretty strong leg, so maybe we, we see him. on. And I guess we don't know that Obarski is the kickoff specialist this year. Hypo made a bit of a joke about it um, in, in one of his early media availabilities. But I guess in theory, we don't know that he will be that uh, that kickoff guy. So maybe maybe the zero to two end up being correct. I guess we'll find out uh, when toe meets leather at uh, at Georgia Tech. While we're there, Heupel will be there, and if we know Heupel, he'll be wearing a jacket. Like the jacket has become a fashionable item. It's half windbreaker, half jacket, no sleeves, some sleeves, collars, no collars. It's got a little flap in the back. There's a lot of fun going on with the jacket. Heupel seems to be a big fan of these. And, uh, and so we asked this year, which color jacket will Hypel wear the most? Uh, only two colors I put down, black and white. Black one with 64% of the vote and white with 35%. Mike, we're going to have to track this this year, but does does the black jacket feel like the winner this year? Well, you're right to only list those two colors because in his time for a game, he's only worn those two colors. And he's, he's worn uh, the one with the gold sleeves, I think, during practice a couple of times. He has a couple other ones. But black and white is how he goes. And it really all depends on what color uniform the team's wearing. And then he wears the opposite. So look at the schedule. We have four home games. Typically, we wear the dark colors at home and the white on the road, right? So if you're just doing the odds, we'll be wearing the white jerseys more often than not, which would put him in a black jacket. If you want to break it down that way, that's the way I would go. Now, are there tricky teams on the schedule? Is Georgia Tech going to bust out white? on the first game and, and causing us that's what we don't know yet usually at this point we have the ucf fans wear uh thing out on the website and we all know what colors to wear to every game i haven't seen that yet for this season i don't know if there is one for this season yeah there's, so, there's one small problem there's no fans uh, uh potentially <laughs> allowed maybe october maybe they'll, well, they'll put it out before the first game in october well yeah so there you go i mean we are going to have some fans in the stands i don't know if we're going to organize what colors to wear and we usually find out what 
a couple of days in advance. When did that, maybe it was a Tuesday or Wednesday last year where they put out the, the uniform combination. I think it's a up Thursday. I think it's Thursday as that comes out. All right, so we're going to find out on Thursday. Once that comes out, you should have a, a clear view of what Hype was going to wear for that week. And pretty sure nine times out of ten, he goes with the opposite color of the rest of the team. So he's easy to pick up on the sidelines. Where I get confused is the, the pewter. Um, is that a dark color? Is that a light color? Um, if I recall correctly, we wore, um, I think we wore pewter um, in the Gasparilla Bowl, but he wore black. But that was more of a full sleeve jacket. I'm not sure. I think we debated at the time if that was a jacket or a jacket. Um, so I, I think the pewter is where I get confused. I don't know where he sees that on the color wheel. I'll also say this, Mike, and trying to be nice. Black is more slimming. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> it's a little bit more slimming. I think I think black st- stands out from the pewter a little bit more than the white. The, right. the pewter is a little bit lighter. So, all right. Next question up was who will be the first listed QB? So an actual listed QB on the roster, not named Dylan Gabriel, to take a snap this year. And so this was kind of playing off of you know how early do we see McKenzie. Uh, you know, does, does anybody get in some garbage time? Are we going to be winning games early on? So here are your options. Quadri, McKenzie, and Parker Navarro with a whopping 85% of the vote. Quadri Jones is your winner, Mike, as the first non-QB, uh, non-Dylan Gabriel named QB to take a snap. KZ was second with 11%. Well, Quadri is the number two listed on uh, the depth chart side out, but we all assume now that Quadri is number two with Daryl Mack gone. And KZ not ready to play. And I don't think you're going to put Parker Navarro in first. So it seems like the obvious answer. The question will be when. Hopefully, it's this Saturday, uh, late third quarter, early fourth quarter. We're up by three, four touchdowns, and we, and we get them a series in there and let them play out the rest of the game. That, that's the ideal situation. We may not see that this week. We may have to wait till the East Carolina game. We may have to wait till the first game at Tulsa. Hopefully, it doesn't take that long to find out. But uh, I, I think Quadri Jones is the obvious answer here. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, if we're we're winning handily in one of these early games, obviously I think Quadri gets in. Now, specifically knowing that McKenzie is not eligible or maybe not expected to play, eligible is probably not the right word, um, I think that uh, that leans heavily for uh, for Quadri. Next up, uh, Randy Shin. Mike, he's got a pretty big contract. I think this is his final year on that on that big deal or – um, you know, there, there was some deferment money with Florida that's, uh, was setting, uh, offsetting a salary. So there's some speculation with the, with the money that Randy may command. Is he looking to maybe, you know, try to get a head coach job again someplace else? Uh, will this be Randy Shannon's last year at UCF? And 68% of you said, no, it will not be Randy's last year that Randy will be back next season. Mike, do you think that's right? Yeah, I think that's right. I think Randy likes it here. We know he's a Florida guy. He, all his jobs have basically been in the state of Florida, Miami for a long time. And then with the Gators recently, and now here with us, um, I, I don't think he wants to leave the state. Now you're looking at coaching opportunities across the state. Oh, well, maybe Norville doesn't pan out here in year one, maybe Florida state will be open and he can go there. But I, I think he likes it here. And two, if Heupel ends up going after this year, uh, this may be the spot where Randy went, takes over as the head coach if, if he wants to. Do we want know if he wants to be a head coach? Maybe he wants one more shot, and, and this would be a perfect spot for him if, if, he, if that's the case and Hypo leaves. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think he goes to Florida State. I think Norvell gets more than a season. Um, would he replace Hypo if Hypo left? That's really interesting because Danny obviously is, you know, his two hires have been all offense. Um you know, but you know, if you keep you know the offensive continuity in place with with the guys he has there, and and you know, just lets one of them call the plays, and you know, with with buyout monies these days, and and COVID stuff, and and budgets being tight, I don't know. Maybe we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully both these guys are around. Um, you know, beyond uh, beyond this year. Uh, our eighth one was: What's the highest ranking UCF will hold this season? So your options were, obviously, um, I did this backwards. Uh, so it was 20 to 16, 15 to 11, 10 to 6, or 5 to 1. Right now, Mike, uh, the winner, 54% of the vote, was 10 to 6. So people think will be uh, the highest ranking UCF will achieve this year is between the 6 and 10 range. What, we're 13 right now in the AP? Um, what do you think? Is that right? Well, I guess those are the people that have been jaded now over the last couple of years, and you can't really blame them, thinking that, 
for whatever reason, the playoff committee is just not going to let us in the top four, top five to be in discussion for the playoffs. The more majority of UCF fans have feel that way right now and for good reason. But, you know, if we're going to win them all and we're going to get in the playoff and we're, we're going to win those games, we're going to finish number one undisputed national champions. And, you know, maybe it's a good thing the Big Ten comes back because I don't want that asterisk at the end. We'll still find our way in. The one question will be, uh, is having a nine-game schedule going to hurt us now at, with the Big Ten coming back if they come back and if the Pac-12 comes back? Yeah, that, that's that's the wild card in all this is the Big Ten. If those teams are back into the mix, right, then we probably settle in somewhere in that, you know, uh, 17 to, to 14 range. Um, you know, and if you want to have the jaded point of view, if you, you add those teams back in, if they're not back in, then, yeah, we have a chance to, to get into that, you know, uh, eight to eight to five range, maybe, Mike, if we play really well and some some things far away and other teams and yada, yada, yada. Um, so I guess it really d- depends on on the Big Ten. At the time I wrote this question, the Big Ten was 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 out. If they're back in now, I guess that uh, you know, it certainly changes changes the narrative. And one last one, Mike, we, we snuck this one here. I'm not going to read the results. Uh, because it's probably not fair, but we asked you who your favorite UCF podcast is. And thank you for those who voted for us. We always appreciate, uh, always appreciate the, uh, the kind thoughts, um, and, uh, everyone who listens to us, Mike. So those are the preseason sunnies. I think by and large, the, you know, we agree with wait most minute, of this. Minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're what's not going to read the results. Are, are you... Yeah. <laughs> we gotta let people know that we won, right? I mean, at least it was our poll. I'm not, I'll say this. If the other podcast put out the same question, I would think whoever puts the question is going to it's their listeners voting they would win so at least can we tell everybody that we won i, I was kind of leaving that, i was kind of leaving that ambiguous i thought people maybe would pick up on that we won <laughs> by saying we appreciate everyone who voted for us and and uh and, and maybe they would pick up on that but uh per- perhaps i don't know mike perhaps a little voter fraud on this one i don't know um but uh again certainly just a little fun with uh with that last question there but coming up mike we're gonna have some real fun uh we were able to track down uh george o'leary for a uh, for a second time and uh, with with U- UCF and Georgia Tech uh, playing this weekend, some have do- dubbed it the George O'Leary Bowl. And so, uh, who's he rooting for? What does he uh, What does he think is going to happen? And then, you know, he's a coach, and everything in, in the coaching world is upside down right now with COVID nineteen. So, uh, really curious to hear his thoughts on what this means and and how he would handle things. So, all those things will be answered exclusively first, coming up here on the Sons of UCF. Do not go anywhere. The Suns have a new interview. Listen up. All right, before we bring in Coach O'Leary, let's talk a little bit about screen skins. Mike, I think uh, I think maybe Coach O'Leary would want a screen skin, uh, and maybe we should get him one and, and FedEx him one um, priority before he gets up to uh, to the Georgia Tech game uh, this weekend. And his phone will be in his hand, and someone will look down and be like, is that a UCF logo? And then it'll be like, no, no, it wasn't. And it'll disappear because that's what screen skins does, Mike. It's a UCF logo on the front of the screen. When the light is off, you see UCF. When your phone lights back up, UCF disappears, and you see your phone as you normally would. Protects your phone. Lets people know you root for UCF. It's a really cool thing. If you don't have one, uh, again, football season is here. You're waiting too long. Get an order in now. You can probably have one before kickoff if you hustle. So uh, Google Screen Skins. Uh, skins is spelled S-K-I-N-Z. Uh, and search for UCF, hit promo code Sons of UCF, and you get 10% off, Mike. I've been telling you guys about this for weeks now. Get it before football season. Here we are, a couple days away. I mean, every football season, you refresh your stuff, right? You got a new hat, or you got a new polo, or you get a new t shirt, something with UCF on it. Get this for your phone. Get it now. You will not regret it. Again, Google Screen Skins. Skins is S K I N Z. Put as much as you want in your basket, get to that checkout, and uh, Sons of UCF will get you 10% off of your order. Do that today. Make sure everybody knows who you are a fan of, and your phone will also thank you. Let's now uh, let's now welcome in uh, Hall of Fame coach George O'Leary coming on right now. All right, Coach, we appreciate you taking some time. You're always generous uh, with your time to join us. So let's start here. There's just been a ton going on, obviously, this offseason. A lot of uncertainty in college football. Uh, you know, coaches and teams, you know, coaches specifically, you guys are creatures of habit, uh, routines, things like that. Put your coaching hat back on for just a second here. How disruptive uh, uh, is this, you know, the COVID virus and what's going on? How disruptive is that to the routine of a coach and, 
And as a coach, how does that kind of challenge you and what you can do with your team kind of moving forward? 